4-1 away win, that means Jan gets some beer. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of Chelsea's 4-1 win in the Premier League away at Southampton. Superb scenes, loads of goals, a few worrying moments which seem to remain in Frank Lampard's side, but it's it's impossible as a Chelsea fan to feel negative about this result. Chelsea came into this game in fine form on a free match winning streak throughout different competitions and to get another win away at Southampton was huge for Chelsea. Southampton are a good side under Ralph Hasenhuel and they can score goals which they showed today but still it wasn't enough to beat Frank Lampard's young exciting direct Chelsea side. So there's loads of stuff to say in today's match review and we're going to get into that but a quick reminder to you guys to subscribe to this channel as I upload daily. That's right, every day, so subscribe, hit the bell notifications icon, and please do like the video. All right, I want to talk a lot about the game, so let's pull up the analysis screen. Boom, <laughs> on the screen next to me, I've got the who scored match center graphic. So you can feast your eyes on all the statistics, metrics and nerdy stuff while I talk you through the game and player performances. The lineup and formation Frank Lampard went with today was an exciting one. It was his 4-2-3-1 slash 4-3-3 depending on whatever the situation is in the match, whether you're in and out of possession, etc, etc. The most exciting name on the team sheet was young Callum Hudson-Odoi returning for his first Premier League start of the season. Christian Pulisic gets returned to the squad to make the bench in this game which he would eventually come on and perform okay. Big man Tammy up front with Willian on the right hand side, Mason Mount in behind with N'Golo Kante and Jorginho, Azpilicueta and Alonso in the fullback positions and in front of Kepa Ruza Balaga it was Big, Zuma and Fikayo Tomori. The scoring was opened in the 17th minute by young Tammy Abraham, assist Callum Hudson-Odoi, lovely scenes already, a wonderfully high lofted ball from Tammy, great finish to lob what could be like 10 men standing on each other's shoulders, just falls over the goalkeeper under the crossbar, goes over the line just, uh, goal line technology confirms the goal. Superb finish, great assist from Callum Hudson-Odoi, but another sort of um, excellent part of the move that got overlooked a little bit is the touch from Tammy Abraham he takes to receive the ball on the side of his heel while running and then finishes greatly. It's one of those lovely goals to watch, bit different. 24th minute, Mason Mount assist Willian. At this point you're thinking it's 2019-20 Frank Lampard's Chelsea revolution being fermented. Mason Mount was a bit quiet last time out, but he was very good in this game and it was a great finish by him. To be honest, he probably shouldn't have had two in terms of chances. Still, great finish, great to see him on the score sheet and lovely assist from Willian, who was, spoiler, superb in this game. Chelsea actually looked so, so much better in this game in defending set pieces. That's been their biggest problem this season under Frank Lampard, across all competitions. Really, really bad at defending set pieces they were poor in transition but it looked like they were getting better at that but you know what they conceded a goal to Danny Ings in the 30th minute through just classic bad defending in open play so that's a change I guess <laughs> Still, I'd rather see Chelsea concede a goal like this that they can tighten up on when generally in long phases of play they are very good defensively and generally throughout the match look much better in defending set pieces. So that's a huge positive for the Blues. 2-1 at this point. Come the 40th minute, that little man in Golo Kante scores yet another goal. The midfielder that has it all. Dribbling goals, long range goals you know interceptor cdm extraordinaire this was a bit more of a long shot it was a little bit of a hit and hope but you know what he's been told to shoot he's shooting i think chelsea have a lot to thank Maurizio sari for ngolo kante's new more well-rounded game 3-1 chelsea Oh yeah, assist Marcus Alonso. Shout out to Alonso. The second half's a lot more quiet than the first half, as if chances on both sides, but Chelsea, as the sort of clock gets run down more and more, the professionalism and more sort of senior players in the starting eleven start to sort of take control of the game, slow it down, and Chelsea look more in charge as Southampton get more desperate. Lampard makes his substitutions in this match, bringing on Mateo Kovacic to sort of settle the game down, and he also brings on Michy Batshuayi and Christian Pulisic. Batshuayi obviously comes on for Abraham, Pulisic comes on for hudson Adoy, who got his assist but probably wasn't on his A game for the whole match, and Kovacic comes on for Mason Mount just to steady up the game. 
Lovely scenes as in the 89th minute Christian Pulisic assists Michy Batshuayi, that Dortmund connection is back, rounding off an excellent performance and really close to the perfect match in terms of Pulisic getting a little bit of game time, getting some confidence. Um, and really, the whole Pulisic situation, which I've done videos about, Frank Lampard commented on recently, he talked about the standard he wants, I think it's to do with work rate and pressing off the ball, um, and that leads me on nicely to player performances, and I want to start talking about Willian probably the player that's been keeping him out. Willian was superb in this game. Obviously he got an assist, he created a bunch of chances. He was superb defensively, made some vital interception and probably ran more than everyone else. He was excellent at pressing. His recovery interceptions were superb. This kind of work rate from the Brazilian, as well as just general game intelligence, knowing the game inside out, is really exactly why Lampard preferences him at the moment. But obviously he's a 10 years older than Christian Pulisic and if there's one person that's got a brighter future moving forward it's obviously Pulisic so it was nice that he came on got an assist got a bit of a run around and he will be integrated more throughout the season I'm sure but Willian was superb in this game deserves massive props especially the first half he bossed all the metrics but he was an integral in seeing the game out and just didn't stop running so Big A star for Willian in this game. Tammy Abraham also excellent, obviously scored the great goal, made runs. He came off at the end for Batshuayi, probably the perfect time, maybe he could have come off five minutes before. Ran his socks off, got the goal, maybe he could have had another one, played an excellent game. Hudson Adoy, like I said, obviously got an early assist. He does look like, even when he's not on his game, like he wasn't really today, he offers something else and he will have that starting left wing spot for Chelsea moving forward and Chelsea will be all the better for it. Mason Mount, very, very good today, obviously got his goal that sort of dampened the spirits of the Saints pretty early. He did have a chance where he should have got a second, but very, very happy with his performance, as will Frank Lampard be. It's great to see him in the midfield number 10 position again, rather than the wing. N'Golo Kante obviously scored a great goal, maybe a bit of a hit and hope. Wasn't at his best today. He actually conceded possession a few times, and I kind of perversely like this, but he's starting to lose his temper a little bit, which, you know, he gets a bit mean sometimes, um, which maybe is like makes him a better player in terms of aggression. Still very integral to this win, but people hold such high standards for N'Golo Kante that, you know, you can see when it drops slightly. Maybe that was today. Jorginho, very, very good. Chelsea's new vice captain. He did get that yellow card when he absolutely cleaned out that Saints player when Chelsea should have got the foul on Azpilicueta but didn't. I love the spirit of Jorginho, as should every other Chelsea fan. Had an excellent game today, getting better and better defensively all the time and obviously is so integral in dictating play and is a very lucid and cerebral player in terms of knowing what's going on around him. Tomori had a couple of slip-ups, but you know what? In terms of just demonstrating ability, he looked excellent today, as did Kazuma. Kazuma was good defensively, but also he's demonstrating long balls. When Antonio Rudiger comes back, I think he'll probably replace Zuma, but I tell you what, Frank Lampard's gonna have a headache soon with his four center backs, because you know, Christensen's not bad either, so they're all looking pretty good at the moment. As Pelicueta, very, very good. He's sort of coming back into his seven out of 10 every match, and that's what Chelsea need of As Pelicueta. He needs to just keep his head, especially if he's meant to be captain. He needs to keep his head, keep doing what he's doing, and yeah, very passable performances from him, and you know, Reese James can learn from him, and it will, for me, be inevitable. Reese James will take that spot due to his general ability, but as he's showing what he's good at in terms of being measured on the ball, showing experience, and pretty much being better defensively. I think Marcus Alonso really does deserve a shout out here because he's obviously come in for Emerson, who's been injured the last few games, and he's been very, very good. It's that classic, you know you're no longer number one and you want to be number one again, because obviously he was under um, Conte and for a large part under Sari. So his ego's been bruised. He's basically had to start putting in 100% performances again. And he's showing his dominance in the air, which is important. I know that was a bit of a meme with Sari talking about how he likes him because he's tall, but he genuinely does win aerial balls and he's quite strong. And he's getting better with his feet. He releases it quicker. So he deserves a shout out. Um, and he got an assist today. Kepa, a little bit wobbly. We know he's a very good footballing keeper, but he does take a couple of chances sometimes that make you go <laughs> but um something you can iron out of his game he's still relatively young for a goalkeeper passable performance generally a great goalkeeper all right that's enough of the match analysis and i'm sure you've soaked up the statistics of the match from the graphics so let's get rid of the analysis screen saints are a very good side in terms they have got good personnel they're good going forward danny ings is a threat which he 
demonstrated today. They went with the 4-3-3, they didn't go with the free back system. Um, they'll be frustrated that they didn't make more out of their chances. Um, maybe Hassan Hull got it wrong in terms of personnel. But apart from Danny Ings, he always seems to be the right choice at the moment, or certainly the right selection. But they are a good side. Saints fans will be disappointed with the performance, but they do create chances. Chelsea got the early goals, and I think they just damaged the confidence of the opposition. And Frank Lampard is looking to do that. I think he's echoed that sentiment before. It's about sort of crushing the opposition's belief of a win early doors and then slowing the game down as the team in control. 4-1 away after three wins on different competitions is an excellent place to be in for Frank Lampard as they go into the international break. Four of his players are going to play with England, a bunch of his other players are going on international break. He can stay at Cobham, reflect on how to move forward in terms of Chelsea's weaknesses, maybe still transition or defending. Certainly, well, set pieces look better today, so he deserves recognition for that. But Chelsea are in a very good place. They're now in fifth in the Premier League and they can look forward and they will fancy themselves as strong contenders for top four now, especially if you look at the recent performances of Tottenham and Man United, etc. I know Arsenal are sort of just scraping by, but they're not that convincing and Chelsea are looking pretty dangerous. So in my match preview, I predicted a 3-2. Basically, I knew both teams would score, but I thought Chelsea would win. That did happen. It was more comprehensive from Chelsea's side, so that was very, very pleasing to see. But what do you guys think? What do you think of the match? Get down in the comments below. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions. Are you like me? thinking this sort of played out, well, apart from conceding, it kind of played out perfectly, especially with Pulisic coming on with Michy, them combining for a goal at the end, William putting in a great performance, hudson Adoy getting his start, Tammy Abraham continuing his scoring run. For me, it was all perfect. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I want to remind you guys, if you want to join the Football Therapy Discord to chat to myself and the other members of the GOAT gang on Football Therapy, you can do. It's in the Patreon link below. It costs $1 and it's a chat. That essentially keeps on going. One big football discussion about Chelsea and all kinds of stuff. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That is it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me back